Testing. Can anyone hear me in the back just fine? Good? All right. To kick off my presentation, I want to share one of my favorite quotes. An investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. As developers, it is our job to constantly learn new things. Curiosity and the need to engage in challenges are what characteristics we all share. But as time progresses, are we utilizing our talents to the maximum potential? My name is Joseph Wong, and I'm an Android developer turned Node developer turned Angular 2 developer turned whatever's on fire developer. The purpose of my talk today is to help developers like us change our perspective on how we manage our resources and learning new skills. I'm here to talk about the concept of knowledge portfolios. And by the end of the next few minutes, I hope to change your perspective when it comes to assessing and growing your skill sets. But before I go on, by a show of hands here, who has read the book Pragmatic Programmer? Okay, it's good enough. For those of you who've already read it, you might already be familiar with most of the concepts presented today. We treat the next little while as a refresher. For those who haven't, a lot of my content today is based on its teachings. If you haven't already, I would highly recommend this book, especially if you want to improve yourselves as professionals in today's market. So, what exactly is a knowledge portfolio? A knowledge portfolio is very similar to a financial portfolio. Instead of managing a portfolio of bonds, stocks, or bitcoins, you're managing a portfolio of experiences and languages, frameworks, CMSs, and cloud-based services such as AWS. A knowledge portfolio is a summation of applicable skills you have learned as a professional. And many of our cases here, Java, the Android framework, the Gradle data system, heck even Agile, will be considered examples of what's currently in a knowledge portfolio. In summary, we can think of ourselves as financial investors, but instead of trading cash and securities, we are trading time, and in some cases sanity, for knowledge. Similar to a financial portfolio, a non portfolio is very hard to manage. Not every financial investor comes out net positive at the end of each quarter. The same holds true to a developer. Just because we spend three months learning X, Y, or Z, it doesn't mean you're ahead. In theory, learning anything can be considered coming out net positive. However, the way you want to think of managing a knowledge portfolio is that it is a function of time versus opportunity costs. So what that means is, whoa, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some technical difficulty here. Uh... <laughs> there we go, sorry. So what this means is, if you're an intermediate senior Android developer, is spending the next six months working on another Android project going to make you a better Android developer? Or would switching off and learning another framework be a better choice? Just how we model a NOS portfolio to a financial portfolio, managing a KP successfully is very similar to managing a financial one. The five key points I'm going to explore is going to help you do better in a NOS portfolio. One, invest regularly. Serious investors invest regularly, as a habit. Two, diversify your assets. Don't put all your technical eggs in one basket. And three, or three, hedging. Investing in competing technologies to help mitigate risk. Four, buy low, sell high. Learning something before it gets big. And finally, review and rebalance. Pausing and looking at the bigger picture every once in a while to help you become a better dev. Investing regularly is a practice done by any successful investor. Breaking the mold of your everyday tasks is how you invest regularly. Every day that passes without a positive net increase in new knowledge is wasted potential. So, how does one go around investing regularly? Stay up to date with your favorite libraries by scouring GitHub issues boards. Engage in discussions with new developer content. Go out and get her with your favorite libraries. It's usually very lively there and you can find all the new issues and all the new features coming out. Follow your favorite developers on social media. This is a big one. They tend to post updates, zero-day vulnerabilities, and even sneak peeks or alpha beta invites to the new libraries. While browsing your fill of cat pictures of Reddit and Imager, take your time and take a look at the other subreddits. They usually, even for the jokey ones or the meta ones, they actually contain gems of really good information to help better yourselves. Um, investing regularly doesn't mean you need to do it alone. Part of investing regularly also means investing in relationships of your team and of other teams. Take on pull requests for other teams, such as iOS or web uh, teams. 
Just because you don't understand the code, what's going on, doesn't mean you can't help contribute and ask questions. You should learn a lot from that. Take your PM or team lead out for coffee even. Usually, they're very passionate about the product and it can give you more perspective on the direction of it. Or do what you're doing right now, attend more meetups. Remember, even if it's a small amount, the habit itself is as important as the sum of its results. Two, just as good as how any good investor doesn't put all their money into one stock, no good developer will ever invest all their time into one technology stack. Even though this is an Android meetup, it doesn't exclusively mean we're just Android developers. Diversifying your time on different technology stacks and tools makes you a stronger Android developer. Here's a specific example coming from my experience. Two years ago, I was uh, tasked with an Android project with Chromecast integration. Chromecast apps are single page apps built with HTML, CSS, JavaScript, just web technologies. Uh, and they had a library that interfaced the client apps, aka Android iOS, with the Chromecast via messaging channel. There are times when your web developer isn't around, or in my case, they might have got fired, uh, and you're kind of screwed. But because you diversified your time, learning a bit about web technologies, understanding a bit of Angular and whatnot, you're able to solve it yourself and save your company a lot of money and they give you a raise. No, I'm just kidding. You know. um, here's an example. Who remembers the BlackBerry playbook? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> as a new grad, I learned Adobe Air, Cascades, and QNX and worked full time as a BlackBerry playbook developer. Needless to say, that did not go well at all. I pigeonholed myself as a developer with a skill set that nobody wanted. However, not all was lost. It was exactly because of that and its learnings I was able to pick up Android quickly and get to where I am today. Android may have been built on a more reliable foundation and being backed by Google slash Apple helps, but history tends to repeat itself. The more technologies you're comfortable with, the better you are or the better you'll be able to adjust to change. Follow for point number two, diversification. It's also important to hedge on knowledge investments. So, what is a hedge investment? Let's start with that. In finance, it is defined as a hedge is an investment to reduce the risk, sorry, a hedge is an investment to reduce the risk of adverse price movements in an asset. Normally a hedge consists of making an offsetting position in a related security. So in layman terms, what it means to us is a hedge is strategically betting against yourself, in our case, by learning a competing technology to offset damages in case the market swings against you. So how does this relate to our NOS portfolio? Well, let's go back in time a little bit. Remember when Android and iOS was first released in 2008? It was clear that iOS was dominating the markets. In terms of work marketplace, I believe in 2008, 2010 was a golden age for iOS developers as they're very high demand and I distinctly remember all the business in Toronto paid like 20K more compared to Android devs. I was deeply saddened by that. But today, and couple of years in that, Android has overtaken the market. Yes. The point I'm trying to get across here is that we should learn from history that the marketplace is very volatile. And alongside the diversifying skill sets, we should also consider learning competing technologies and hedge our knowledge portfolio to include that. Spending some time learning a competing mobile, native, or web framework that directly competes with Android is a great way to protect ourselves. It doesn't have to be much. You can just tinker around with titanium or this around the angle and make sure it's mobile web friendly. It's stuff like that that keeps you protected and better than your competitors. Um, four, at a glance, buy low, sell high doesn't make much sense. A synonymous way of saying it is do not buy high and sell low. Having a healthy knowledge portfolio also includes having the foresight to know what are the emerging tools and learning before the market is saturated. Knowing Gradle before it became the standard build tool for Android is an example of buying low and selling high. Investing your time learning something before it becomes popular will set you comfortably up for the future. Coming back to my playbook experience, I definitely did the opposite. I bought high, sold low. By learning the playbook when it was most popular, aka when it was just released, it was a terrible experience. Because by the time I fully understood the playbook stack, the technology was functioning obsolete. And finally, review and rebalance. The software development industry is a very dynamic and harsh environment. One day everyone's raving about Ruby on Rails, the next is Node.js, the next is React.js, and so forth. We can see the similar trends in mobile as well. Android, we're very accustomed to coding in plain old Java, but we see an emergence of RxJava, emerges emergence of other ways of developing Android coming along. 
Same thing for iOS. One day is Objective-C, the next day your news feeds always talk about Swift. It's important to stay informed on what's happening in market. Similar to the financial market, you need to review the market every few months and plan out your portfolio. So to recap really quickly, the five points on how to build a healthier dollar portfolio, invest regularly. Serious investors invest regularly as a habit. Two, diversify knowledge. Diversify knowledge, new, learn new things unrelated to Android. Three, hedge your knowledge. Learn things competing with Android. Four, buy low, sell high. Don't be the last one to jump on a bandwagon, and don't be the only one left on a bandwagon. And five, review rebalance. Take a step back and adjust the portfolio every three or so months. If you have any questions, I'll be sitting down there. And yeah, that's it in my talk. I'm Joseph Wong. Thanks for listening.